Hello and welcome to program 24 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email list, then please go to markplex.com and sign up there. And uh, I'll be happy to let you know when I create new tutorials or programs. So I had a couple of people who asked me about program 11, which looks for divergence between price and CCI, asking me whether I had written anything that looked for reverse or otherwise known as hidden divergence and uh, I hadn't but now I have in program 24 and uh, what I've done is made a new program that looks for hidden or reverse divergence between price and CCI so first of all just to explain what, what I mean by reverse or hidden let's just look at this graphic which I've created and uh, which you can download from Markplex com but uh, regular divergences would be something like you get a higher high in price and a lower high in a momentum indicator which in our case is the CCI or for example a lower low in price but a higher low in um, CCI or a momentum indicator which would be perhaps seen as a uh, as a bullish uh, formation now what reverse uh, or hidden divergence does is for example in this case we have a higher low in price and a lower low in the momentum indicator and some would see this as perhaps indicating a continuation in price uh, action direction and similarly uh, if we had a lower high in price and a higher high in the momentum indicator in our case CCI then that would also be a uh, reverse or hidden divergence, perhaps indicating uh, a bearish potential movement in price. Now you probably noticed that uh, if you look at the uh, the left two columns and the right two columns then you could have this particular price pattern com being considered both reverse and regular divergence. Um, make sure you use this if you're looking for bullish reverse then you'll be looking at the the lower parts of the price action and the lower parts of the CCI action. If you're looking for a, a bearish uh, hidden reverse divergence then you'll be looking at the top of the price action and the only reason that these two columns uh, could be both reverse and regular is because the amplitude of those waves are the same in both in actual fact you probably see something different happening with the uh, the lower part of the waves anyway I hope that that graphing might be useful to you so what I've done in uh, program 24 is created this reverse divergence and uh, in this particular case I've not protected the code of the indicator because I uh, figured you might want to go in there and change the colors of the lines that are drawn particularly if you want to use this program together with program 11 and of course I could have made them inputs but the program already has a lot of inputs and I didn't want to overdo that so let's just uh, go through a few scenarios with this and uh, oh and incidentally the uh, even though the program is unprotected the uh, CCI function that it uses the smooth markplex CCI function is actually protected so you can't see that code but you can see the, the uh, indicator code and you can modify it so what I'm going to do is just go through uh, one or two scenarios just to demonstrate some aspects of this program and uh, as I say there are a lot of uh, inputs so what we're going to do to start with is just set what, what I've called show lines one to be true and what this is looking for is like we've just seen on the graphic uh, the hidden divergence between price and the CCI so for example you can see here that we've got a lower high in price and uh, if you compare that with the CCI which is the, uh, the cyan you see that we get a higher uh, CCI there and uh, maybe potentially giving you uh, an idea that the price is going to continue in a, a bearish uh, direction there and uh, let's just go back and see if we can see any other examples here uh, another example here you can see the uh, price is making a lower high whereas the CCI is making a higher high and bear in mind with this program there is a certain amount of tolerance between how many bars apart the CCI and the uh, the price pivots can occur okay so that's the first one Let's, uh, let's go and change this and I'm going to change instead of show lines 1 I'm going to make it show lines 2 so I'm going to change show lines 1 to be false 
and the show lines two to be true. And uh, what this now is looking for, what I've termed as secondary divergence, and probably the easiest way of just explaining that is just to give you an example. So here we can see an example where the CCI has made a higher high and uh, the price has either made two pivots that are either equal or the second one is, is uh, lower than the first one. But what you'll notice here is they were actually ignoring one of the price pivots which occurs in this uh, this middle bar here. So that is what I'm calling secondary divergence. We're looking for the the uh, essentially the first and third pivots in price and uh, two pivots in CCI. So let's just go and uh, have a look at some other things. Now one of the things you can do in either show uh, lines one or show lines two is also look at the fast CCI. So I'm going to set that to be true and uh, let's just uh, change show lines one to be true again and uh, see if we can see any so we can and, and what we're saying here essentially is that uh, you see the uh, the magenta line then the dark magenta the dark magenta which is separated a little bit based on a user input is showing that we're also getting the divergence between price and the uh, the fast CCI and you can see the same for the uh, this previous little bit of price action here so in terms of how far apart those lines are separated I can uh, show you that input that is the indicated here by line separator so you can adjust that if you wish to and uh, a couple of other things just to mention is a one price pip diff what this does is if it finds two CCI pivots but it's only found the first price pivot we're still waiting for the second price pivot to maybe occur then what this will do is instead of waiting for that second or rather the first the the most recent price pivot it will just f show you what it'll just use the price at which the second CCI pivot occurred in the calculation. And then early warning, this is uh, most of the time the program waits till the end of a bar before drawing the lines just to confirm that the, uh, the divergence has occurred. If this is set to true, what it will do is calculate within the bar and uh, so what you might see is lines appearing and then disappearing and then appearing as the bar forms and uh, if by the end of the bar there isn't a divergence uh, set up then the line would disappear even though it had appeared during the uh, formation of the bar. So um, I think the rest of these are fairly self-explanatory. A lot of them to do with presentation uh, of the CCI which is uh, drawn below the chart, the, uh, the length of the CCI and the fast CCI and then the smooth length and fast smooth length determine the uh, go into the, uh, the CCI smooth CCI um, function. Other things to look for bar tolerance this defines how many bars apart the uh, price CCI sorry the price pivot and the CCI can occur to be considered valid left strength right strength are determining the strength of pivots both on CCI and price in other words left strength three means they have to be for a high pivot three bars lower than the uh, the high pivot um, on the left of the bar and right strength means there has to be at least one bar to the right of the pivot for it to be considered a pivot and uh, then one other one I just want to highlight and that is the show regular CCI which I've got set to false if you set this to true you'll also see plotted on the chart the non smooth CCI as well although the program does not use that in its uh, calculation of the divergences Anyway, as I say, um, this, this program will be available for download for a nominal fee and uh, you will be able to see the code. You cannot see the code for the uh, smooth CCI function, but you can see the rest of the indicator and uh, modify it if you choose to do so. And particularly if you use this with program 11 in order to uh, save confusion, what I would suggest is that you change the, uh, the colors within the program so that you can see a difference between the hidden divergence and the regular divergence. Anyway, I hope you might find this program useful.